Chapter 5, Dangerous Stunts and Near Misses. Jackie's first trip to the United States was a st to star in the movie Battle Creek Brawl, which would be filmed in Texas. It was about a young man who is warned not to show his kung fu skills until one day he is forced to. But life in Texas was hard. Jackie knew very little English. It, he had a difficult time even in ordering breakfast. Sometimes he called his manager, Willie Chan, in Hong Kong to translate his order for him. And he had to learn all his English lines in just two weeks. A tutor helped him during the day, and he watched TV at night to listen to English words. But when filming began, Jackie was unhappy. American filmmaking was different than Hong Kong cinema. It was much more planned, with every scene written and sketched out in advance. He felt it left very little room for creativity. When the movie, now called The Big Brawl, finished filming, Jackie couldn't wait to get back to Hong Kong. But Golden Harvest had other plans. They sent Jackie on a tour of California to promote the movie instead. Jackie was not happy. He had trouble answering a reporter's questions. They confused Kung Fu with Karate, and they asked if he was the next Bruce Lee. Jackie decided he didn't need to be a star in America. He was a star in Asia. Even though the big brawl was not a success, Golden Harvest wanted him to make another movie. They hoped the Cannonball Run would earn more money. The movie was a big hit for all the other actors, but it didn't show off Jackie's martial arts skills and talent. He played a race car driver, so he was sitting for most of his scenes. Nobody knew who this little Chinese guy was that spoke no English, Jackie said later. Discouraged, Jackie went back to Hong Kong. He was ready to make movies the way he wanted. He starred in Project A in 1983. It was a huge success. For the first time, Jackie had done something his films have come to be known for, a really dangerous stunt. Jackie hung from a clock tower and fell 50 feet through two cloth awnings before he hit the ground. He did the stunt three times. He wanted the cameras to get the right angles. Jackie never used special effects or stunt doubles for his work. No blue screens and computer special effects, no stunt doubles, real action, real danger, and sometimes real and terrible injury, Jackie wrote. Jackie was scared the entire time he did such dangerous stunts. Anyone who really thinks I'm not scared out of my wits when I'm about to do one of these stunts is nuttier than I am. Jackie began dating a Taiwanese actress named Lin Zhengzhou around this time. They were married in 1982 and had a son, JC. Jackie was the biggest movie star in Asia now, even though American audiences were mostly unaware of him. Jackie continued to make hit movies in Hong Kong. In 1986, he started a production company there called Golden Way Films. A production company chooses which films to make, hires actors, and shoots and release, releases movies. He also began a modeling agency and an organization to help stunt people pay for doctor visits. Too many had been hurt while filming the movie Police Story. Like Jackie had experienced earlier, they sometimes had, to trouble, had trouble paying their doctors for medical care. Jackie helped them because he knew just how dangerous stunt work could be. Jackie's Spectacular Stunts Jackie has performed many amazing stunts over the course of his career, including using the handle of an umbrella to grab an open bus window and being thrown onto the highway below, driving a car down a mountainside, zigzagging through not around buildings in the village, sliding down the side of a 21-story building, running along the tops of movie buses while dodging signs and billboards overhead, parachuting from a plane to appear to jump over a cliff, landing on top of a hot air balloon, roller skating over a Volkswagen Beetle, and then under an 18-wheeler truck. In fact, in 1986, Jackie was seriously hurt. He was in Yugoslavia filming a movie called Armor of God when an easy stunt went wrong. He was supposed to jump from the top of a building to a tree, but the tree branches broke and Jackie fell to the ground. He hit his head on a rock and was rushed to the hospital. Fortunately, doctors were able to operate quickly. He was grateful the doctors did a good job fixing such a difficult injury. For the next 10 years, Jackie continued to make and star in action movies in Hong Kong. Most were hits. Jackie became an even bigger star in other Asian countries and throughout the world. 
but he was still waiting to become an American movie star. Chapter 6, Jackie in Hollywood. Jackie was 41 years old by 1995. He wasn't able to do all the dangerous stunts he had when he was younger. Fights and stunts took him longer. He had never used special effects or stunt doubles before in his movies, but his longtime manager, Willie Chan, asked him to consider it. Around this time, Jackie decided to give Hollywood another try. After all, he still had two dreams, a big, glitzy gala opening night premiere with photographers and velvet ropes and celebrities, just like on TV, and to get my hands and name printed in the cement outside the famous Man's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Man's was originally called Grauman's Chinese Theater. Many famous people have left their handprints and footprints in cement there, so Jackie began looking for the right script for an American movie. Jackie found just the film he was dreaming of in 1995's Rumble in the Bronx. It was risky filming some of the more dangerous scenes. One required Jackie to jump from a bridge to a moving hovercraft. When Jackie landed on a boat, he fell backwards and twisted his right foot. He was hospitalized and used a wheelchair for weeks. Jackie had been in over 100 films by this time, but he had finally found the movie that made him a star in the United States. Rumble in the Bronx became the first Hong Kong film ever to make it to number one at the U.S. box office. Jackie's next American movie did even better. It made him a truly international celebrity. In 1998, American director Brett Ratner asked Jackie if he'd like to star in a buddy cop movie. He would play a Chinese police officer, and comedian Chris Tucker would play a Los Angeles policeman. Jackie agreed, but after he met his co-star, neither actor was sure it was a good idea. Chris Tucker was surprised to learn that Jackie's English wasn't very good. Grauman's Chinese Theater Grauman's Chinese Theater opened in Hollywood, California on May 18, 1927. Fans along Hollywood Boulevard waited to see movie stars and celebrities as they entered the theater for the premiere of a movie called The King of Kings. Since that time, Grauman's Chinese Theater on the historic Hollywood Walk of Fame has been the site of many movie openings. Fans gather to see famous actors and actresses arrive and walk up the red carpet into the theater. Movie stars are sometimes asked to leave their handprints and footprints, and sometimes their leg or nose prints in cement near the entrance of the theater in an area known as the forecourt of the stars. More than five million visitors from all over the world go to the theater each year to watch a movie, see the star's handprints, or tour the famous venue. From 1973 to 2001, it was renamed Man's Chinese Theater, then reverted to its original name until 2013 when it became TCL Chinese Theater. And Jackie was concerned that he couldn't understand Chris, but the director thought they would be great together. As filming for Rush Hour finished, Jackie felt certain that the movie had not turned out well. He didn't understand what the audience was laughing at during the movie's premiere, but audiences loved Jackie's kung fu moves, his silly charm, and Chris Tucker's fast-talking energy. The two actors had grown to really like each other, and it showed on the screen. Jackie was back at work in Hong Kong when he got word that Rush Hour was a huge hit in the United States. Audiences loved the movie so much, they stuck around to watch the outtakes, scenes that were not included in the final movie in the end credits. They thought those were even funnier. Rush Hour made more than $140 million in the United States alone and was one of the biggest money-making movies of 1997. Jackie finally had a successful Hollywood career for English-speaking audiences and a Hong Kong career for Chinese-speaking fans.